back to this one straight ahead at uh, 4.30 Pacific time on Saturday on ABC. Ruben says, I know they're saying meaning Vegas. USC is favored by 10 and a half. I saw a line of nine on uh, ESPN site, whatever service they use. Realistically, how do you see this game going? Do you think they will cover? Yeah, frankly, so, you know, I'm going to tell it to you straight. I would stay with away from this game. I would not touch this game with a 39 and a half foot pole. Uh, I mean, you can very easily see USC winning by 31, but you can also see Stanford punching USC in the mouth early in the game, bleeding the clock. USC panics a little bit, you know, is kind of scratching and clawing, trying to get, get control of the game in the third quarter. Uh, you know, Caleb Williams tries to do a little bit too much. I, I can see any and all scenarios for this game. I can see Stanford winning. Doesn't mean I expect Stanford to win. I don't, but I can certainly see Stanford winning. Now, you know, I don't think that Stanford has all the horses to keep up with USC over 60 minutes. I, I don't, I, I have to see Stanford's offensive line prove itself and be able to uh, establish true physical superiority. Um, you know, that I don't know that about Stanford just yet. Also, I would say that USC playing this Stanford team early in the season probably a benefit for the Trojans because David Shaw did bring in a great recruiting class, but that recruiting class needs some time to gel. It needs some time to mesh. So playing Stanford in late October, I think you would get a better Stanford team more fully equipped to win this game. So lots of different moving parts here, but I, I would say stay away from this game. If you really are considering betting on it, maybe you do a live bet. Like if Stanford gets a 10, nothing lead, then you might get USC plus four live. That would be something uh, to really ride on. Um, I, I think USC wins by about 10 points. I think that is where I see this game going. I think Stanford will have a few successful drives early against USC's unproven defense. Caleb Williams is going to keep pace. Uh, and then in the third quarter, you're going to see, you know, the USC offense continue to do what it does. And Tanner McKee is going to have to keep up in a shootout. And that is not a game that David Shaw likes to play. Uh, so I'd say USC, something in the area of 34-24, maybe 37-27, something in that range for Saturday night on ABC. Matt, well, um, college football fans look at USC and think rivals – UCLA, Notre Dame, when they go to Stanford, it's obviously Cal and Stanford. Uh, and then secondarily, in terms of because of the the status of the two programs and them running into each other for North Division championships, Stanford and Oregon for roughly a decade. But this this one it has a ton of history and it's it's an interesting matchup. And there's a lot of vitriol between the two. Yeah, I mean, one of the, you know, for, for younger college football fans, it's worth noting, Stanford made two consecutive Rose Bowls to interrupt the John McKay dynasty in the early 1970s. You know, USC was the thing in Western college football. You had O.J. Simpson, you know, winning the national title in 1967, making the Rose Bowl, which was a one versus two national title game against Ohio State in 19, uh, the 1968 season. In 1969, USC goes back to the Rose Bowl, beats Bo Schembechler in Schembechler's first Rose Bowl game, and USC finished in the top three in the polls that year. So 67, 68, 69, USC is just rolling along, dominating Western college football. And then you have a guy named Jim Plunkett who comes onto the scene at Stanford, and Stanford wins two straight Rose Bowls, beats Ohio State one year, beats Michigan another year. So Stanford beat Woody and Bo back-to-back -back before you had then USC retaking control in the West, retaking control in the Pacific 8 Conference with its 1972 team, which I would say is the greatest single-season USC team of all time. So, like, that's a part of the, the larger history of USC and Stanford, that Stanford walked into the middle of a great dynasty, busted it up for a couple years before – John McKay came back better than ever and won two more national championships. Tim is noting the 2007 game that cost a USC a national championship or a shot at the national championship. 
and the greatest point spread upset in college football history, if I'm not yes. mistaken. Yeah, the uh, 41, I believe, was the line on that yep. one. Yep. Pete Carroll played an injured John David Booty. Uh, you know, he had that busted thumb and, well, probably should have uh, shouldn't have done that. But he did. And the rest is history. What's your deal? 